Our presentation is covering osteomas, and it was completed by Gunnar Brantley, Cassandra Wynn, Dang Dang, Truck Doan, Shamali Primaraj, and Andrew Dowd. The definition of an osteoma is a benign neoplastic growth of bone tissue, and these neoplasms are normally located in the skull with an increased incidence in females at a 3 to 1 ratio to males. And these growths can be classified as homoplastic or heteroplastic. Homoplastic growths are bone growths on other existing bone, and this can be further subclassified into either peripheral, which is a mass that's developed attached to the cortical plate, or central, which develops from the endosteal surface of the bone. And heteroplastic neoplasms, on the other hand, are gross on a non-bony tissue. And histologically, osteomas can be classified as compact, spongy, or mixed. And while osteomas are rare, they are most frequently found in the nose and paranasal sinuses. Osteomas are most prevalent in middle age, but they can occur at any stage of life. And due to these neoplasms commonly presenting in the sinuses, headaches and sinus infections are the most common signs and symptoms. The vast majority of osteomas are spontaneous, with hereditary involvement being very rare, and they commonly present with facial asymmetry if the growth is grossly noticeable. However, most are asymptomatic, and while this, is, while this is the case, an osteoma's symptomatic nature is heavily dependent on size and location. If it's a large tumor, it'll typically present with more complications, while smaller tumors will present with less. And these complications are largely dependent on location as well, and this can be represented below in figures one and two, which respectively uh, represent a prominent osteoma of the frontal bone and an osteoma in the auditory canal. And osteomas of the auditory canal could cause issues such as hearing loss, and osteomas growing into the eye socket could cause issues such as proptosis. Radiography of osteomas usually show a round or oval bone tissue mass on CT scan. Uh, it'll appear as a homogeneous radiopaque projection that can be both sessile or peduncolated. And also present are noticeably smooth margins that are well-defined and well-corticated, containing a radiolucent nidus or origin surrounded by dense sclerosis. And in figure 3 below, a very easily noticeable radiolucent nidus can be seen in the middle of the inner skull osteoma. And in figures 4 and 5 here, a radiopaque osteoma of the frontal sinus can be seen with round, smooth margins. The first differential diagnosis associated with an osteoma is a torus, and tori can often be histologically identical to osteomas, however they remain exclusive to the jawbone. While osteomas are normally spontaneous and idiopathic, it's been hypothesized that tori may have spo spe specific causes such as genetic predispositions, local irritation, and bruxism or malocclusion. And tori are typically found on the lingual surface of the mandibular canine, premolar, or along the midline of the hard palate, as opposed to osteomas, which don't have a single common location outside the sinuses and can arise anywhere. And figure 6 is showing a CT scan of moderately sized mandibular tori with irregular borders, and in figure 7 you can notice the prominent tori of the same patient from an intraoral photographic perspective. The second differential diagnosis in association with osteomas are exostoses. And these are bone growths on top of normal bone. Exostoses are generally not peduncolated, as some osteomas may be. And both osteomas and exostoses are covered by normal skin. However, exostoses will often be multiple in number, whereas osteomas will commonly be a single lesion. Also, exostoses, on the other hand, are commonly found in the maxillary, mandibular, buccal, alveolar processes in the molar and premolar areas. And in figure 8, uh, it shows numerous buccal exostoses on both arches with the mandibular being affected the most. Treating an osteoma is specific to the patient in case, and most osteomas are asymptomatic and don't require treatment, but if there is any mild pain, an osteoma can first be treated with minimal pain medication. And for symptomatic osteomas that do require intervention, surgical removal is the most common form of treatment. And osteomas that cause pain of any magnitude have specific size and location, that are in hindering any uh, physio physiological process, block sinus drainage leading to infection, create cosmetic issues, etc., are all indicated for surgical removal. And in figure 9 below, uh, it compares preoperative and postoperative imaging of a forehead osteoma that was indicated for surgical removal. And these are the literature citations, and these are the image citations. Mm -hmm.